Okay, now you know this guy from Stand By Me, Star Trek, and The Big Bang Theory. I hate you, Will Wheaton. I'm kidding. Uh, even though his on-screen success is, sorry, uh, actor and writer Will Wheaton is still just a geek. Again, that's his words, not mine. Uh, Will, what a pleasure it is talking to you. Hi, good to see you. I still, like, I hate you, Will Wheaton. It's like this thing with the Big Bang Theory. What a, what a highlight. Was that as fun for you uh, playing yourself as it was for, for fans of yours watching you pop up? I'm like, why did yeah, you just punch um, Sheldon? Uh, I, I, have, I have told people for, uh, gosh, close to 10 years now, as much fun as you think I am having, I am having infinitely more fun <laughs> than that. Literally every day on the Big Bang Theory was like the best day of my life. I absolutely loved it. As a fan of yours and a fan of Star and then a fan of the Big Bang, whose idea was it to get you as Will Wheaton popping up on that show, which is about nerds who love Star Trek and you? I think the idea originated with Bill Prady, one of the co-creators yeah. of the show, and Steve Malaro, who currently runs Young Sheldon uh, and was one of the writers on Big Bang Theory at the time. They were looking for someone to be kind of a rival to Sheldon. They knew that in real life I lived in Pasadena. They knew in real <laughs> life that I was a gamer. Uh, and they just they, they brought those ideas to create that character. Um, and then, you know, I got to be his nemesis for a few seasons and then so they fun. switched the relationship and we became friends. Um, and uh, and it was it was a remarkable, remarkable 12 seasons. for oh, me. It was so fun watching you every time he went to knock on your door. Will Wheaton, Will Wheaton, Will Wheaton. It's just, it was always going to be so if, much fun. If you, notice, if, if you ever look, they made my address in the show 1701, which is the number of the Enterprise. That's so amazing. Every little detail always went a long way. So let's talk about this uh, uh, still just a geek, because this is okay. an interesting concept you came up with. I, tell, me, tell me what it's all about, to like blog posts and all that kind of stuff. In 2000, I started a blog. In 2004, I collected a bunch of those blog posts and turned them into a sort of memoir. Yeah. And uh, uh, as I was turning 30, I'm turning 50 this year. Stop and it. I what? wanted- Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I know. I know. Will Wheaton. Know. I know. Will Wheaton. Listen. You're turning what? Look, man, as upsetting and disturbing as that is for you, imagine what it's like for me. <laughs> you know, but give me a my break. son's you know, turning thirty-two this year. Like I'm, I'm, you oh know, my God, I'm, I'm, I know it's all happening. It's ridiculous. So, um, uh, my editor had this idea for me, turning almost fifty, to look back on who I was when yeah. I was almost and to annotate it and talk about how I have changed, how the world has changed. Um, I could look back on things where uh, I I can see the things that I regret about being that age. I can see the things that I love about being that age. Um, and hopefully what this does is it tells an entire l story of yeah. uh, my journey overcoming childhood abuse and exploitation, um, learning to love and embrace the parts of my life that I didn't choose, but that I happen to be good at. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and hopefully it provides a little bit of a roadmap for people who live with uh, mental health issues um, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, who are looking to find their best selves. You know, you kind of led me right into this because I wanted to kind of ask you all about choosing roles as a grown-up versus as a kid actor where you don't have as much control and then obviously mental uh, mental health awareness month, the month of May, by the way. Um, yeah. You've been very open about your depression, your anxiety, all the stuff that people struggle with and don't want to talk about. The stigma has gotten a little bit better, right? But you've really taken it upon yourself to help folks out. I have lived with depression and anxiety for most of my life. Yeah. Um, pretty sure that I had it undiagnosed when I was a teenager. And one of the primary reasons that I suffered as long as I did was the shame and stigma that surrounded it and how my parents felt that if I had a mental illness that it reflected poorly on sure. them, therefore we should just pretend it doesn't exist so they're not embarrassed. I talk about it at every opportunity because it is really my, my, my dream that at some point in my lifetime, it will be completely unremarkable to talk about mental illness. Like you wouldn't have me on your show to talk about how I have a cut on my hand and I wouldn't come on here to talk about how I went to the doctor and had right. a broken bone. And, and mental illness should really be treated the same way. I want everyone to know that a person can be 
as successful and as as happy and as uh, 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 like respected as I am in my in my work yeah. and still struggle with mental illness. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. And there are so many wonderful ways to get medical help and to get therapeutic help so that we can live our best lives. And I hope that by putting myself out there and showing myself as an example yeah. that I can inspire people. There's somebody watching this right now who's like right at the verge of like, I don't want to feel this way anymore. It's really time for me to make that call. Like I'm telling you, whoever you are, make it. You're going to be so, so, so glad. Let somebody help you. I couldn't agree with you more because, you know, a lot of times people will look at you and say, well, Wheaton, he's got it all. He's got the, the, the TV shows, the money, the wealth, all this stuff. He's <laughs> almost 50, doesn't look 50, all this stuff. But it's really <laughs> just why, why this is important to talk about it. Uh, we're running out of time, but I was like, somebody told me just now that you have a collab with Stone Brewery here in San Diego. I'm like, what? I do. I Dude. do. Yeah. Uh, Greg, Greg, Greg Cook and I have been friends yeah. forever and ever and ever. Um, and, and he and Drew Curtis, who, who runs Spark.com, the three of cool. us collaborated uh, to make a beer that you can get at any of the Stone uh, uh, locations in, in San Diego and up at their brewery in Escondido. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm real proud Look of it. It's a guy. funny. Look it's, at this guy. Big, uh, uh, it's a giant Russian Imperial Stout, uh, aged in Ooh. bourbon barrels. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's really buddy. Great. I was going to ask since you. We're running out of time. I just wanted. To, I just want to do this thing that I've always wanted Please. to do. My nephew Nathaniel just graduated from the engineering college at SDSU, and we were down there for his graduation uh, earlier, uh, just a couple of days ago. And I just want everyone in San Diego to know how fiercely proud I am of him and his entire graduating class. Congratulations to all of them. Go Aztecs, go Will Wheaton. I'm gonna tell you, you gotta come down to Comic-Con and please come visit us in person. Uh, we would love to talk to you. And none of this Sheldon, uh, we hate you. No, we, we love Will Wheaton around here. Will Wheaton, we love Will Wheaton. Uh, the next time I'm in San Diego, uh, you're really gonna regret inviting me into your studio because I'm gonna show up and refuse to leave. I, I will not because you will bring the stone beer and we will all be happy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. I really appreciate you making time for me this morning. Thanks a lot. Anytime, Will. Thanks for the time. All right.